I just created a new video series called CyberCab, where we take my Model 3 out and simulate if the car were a robo-taxi, bringing it to random destinations and seeing how far it can go before needing to disengage or intervene in any kind of way. In this last video, we went 50 miles. It completed 11 hypothetical robo-taxi rides. And I uploaded the video, and immediately I got a comment that stopped me dead in my tracks. Could you add hourly revenue as well? I would be very interested in seeing it. And holy shit, that is exactly, I think, what this video series needed to make it really interesting. And to really, I just think it's a great way of visualizing the hypothetical future for people who have adopted this technology under the sort of promise, the idea that in someday in the future, their vehicle might be able to become a robo taxi and go out and earn them money. So I had to figure out how much a Model 3 or a Model Y might be able to earn its owner if added to the Tesla RoboTaxi fleet. So I went and did some research, I updated the video and re-uploaded it, and you can check it out now, CyberCab Episode 2. From now on, every single CyberCab episode will have this revenue tracker and breakdown and everything. But if you watch the video, you're going to notice that it's earning quite a bit of money over a small amount of time. And then at the very end, we deduct the cost of operating the vehicle. So that's charging, maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. And then we also deduct the revenue split with Tesla, which we're assuming would be Tesla taking 30% of the profit and you get 70%. So all of these numbers are based on Twitter user Aloho or Alojo. I'm not sure how to pronounce their name, but they did a breakdown and analysis of what they think it would cost to operate a Tesla Model 3 or Y robo taxi and then how much Tesla might charge on top of that to earn a gross profit. You can check out a link to it in the description. You can check out their, their X account. But the long and short of it, just to give you a basic idea, is that they think it would cost roughly 58 cents per mile to operate the robo taxi. This includes everything from charging the vehicle, to cleaning it, to paying for insurance, to replacing tires, wiper blades, brake pads, air filters, etc. So when you watch CyberCab episode 2, you're going to see throughout the video that the amount of revenue that the car is earning is 83 cents per mile, which would be the charge to the customer. And then at the very end of the video, we break it down and we say, okay, now we subtract 58 cents per mile because of the cost of operation. This would be cleaning and charging the vehicle and paying for insurance and so on and so forth. This would leave you with 25 cents per mile in earnings based on Aloho's analysis. But Aloho's analysis is based on the idea that Tesla owns the vehicle being used as a robo taxi. So if it's, an, uh, if it's a privately owned vehicle by someone like you or me, you would have to imagine that Tesla would take a share of that profit. So in this case, we would assume that Tesla takes 30% of that 25 cents per mile earning. So then we also deduct that in the video, and that leaves you with a much smaller number than what you see throughout the video. But the thing that I wanna get into in this video is that I think this is a conservative estimate, at least in the long term. And the reason I say that is because I think there are actually a ton of advantages to a robo taxi for to the end user to the customer i think there's a ton of reasons why you would actually prefer vastly to use a robo taxi to get you from point a to point b than a, a human driven uber or lyft ride and what got me thinking about this was uh, a different comment on a on my youtube video uh, derek davis 213 said a human uber driver can drive faster and much safer than a robo taxi Uber and Lyft are available right now and give millions of rides every day. RoboTaxi is not needed. Nobody is asking for it. What I don't think he's right about is his insinuation that nobody wants RoboTaxis. And that's what I want to break down here. And these two ideas connect, okay? These two comments connect. Wondering how much you could earn from a RoboTaxi ride and then asking the question of whether this is even something that people want because I actually think this is definitely something people will want. In fact, so much so that I think people will be willing to pay a premium for robo taxi rides. So let's get into it. So first let's compare what a human 
driven Uber or Lyft costs to a customer and compare that with the numbers we're using in our estimations for the robo-taxi. So the average Uber or Lyft drive costs a customer roughly $1.50 or $2.50 per mile. That's the cost to the customer. In my CyberCAD videos, we're assuming that the cost to the customer is $0.83 cents per mile. So this is kind of assuming that Tesla will need to undercut the competition to draw people in and use their service because obviously there's gonna be a bit of a perception issue around robo taxis at first. And so I do think this is potentially an accurate model, at least for a period of time, probably at the beginning of when Tesla launches this service. Again, we're assuming 83 cents per mile for a Model 3 or Y added to the robo taxi fleet. And I do think that that's accurate at first. Again, people are going to have trust issues with robo taxis. There are undoubtedly going to be videos trending on, you know, X and YouTube and Facebook and, and Instagram of, of robo taxis getting in accidents or horror stories or whatever, and there's gonna be a stigma around it. So I, th I do think there'll be a period of time where Tesla probably has to charge less to get people just to try the service. However, I do think that that stigma will pass. I do think also that they'll work through the issues whatever they are that occur when they first launch their service and the service will get better and people's trust and enjoyment of the service will improve over time. And once that happens, my question becomes, why would you ever want to take a human driven Uber or Lyft again? And the reason that I ask this is because I can immediately think of several advantages of taking a Tesla robo taxi ride as opposed to a human driven Uber or Lyft drive. I have seven of these different advantages laid out. There may be more, but these are just the seven that I immediately think of. So let's get into them. First, I'm going to list them all out and then we're going to dive a little bit deeper into each one. All right. Number one, privacy. I think this is obvious to everybody. This seems to me to be the most obvious part of all of this. We, I think we've all had a bad experience where we've had kind of a weird Uber driver who makes a weird comment who makes a creepy comment, or maybe they smell bad, whatever, whatever the situation is. We've seen videos on the internet of it, we've experienced it ourselves, and unfortunately, I mean, you know, this, this goes beyond just being a minor annoyance or inconvenience. In some cases, this has been a safety issue for people, especially for women. So I think immediately you could understand that a lot of people, for the sake of safety or uncomfortable situations with Uber drivers. Privacy is a huge reason someone might be willing to pay a premium for a Tesla robo taxi. Number two, consistency. When you order an Uber or a Lyft drive, you don't know if you're getting picked up by a Kia Rio or a Toyota RAV4 or a Toyota Prius or a Tesla. There's a huge range of things. And in fact, it's already built into the app that, you know, with Uber X and Uber Black, there's literally a feature that you can pay a premium for a more consistent riding experience. You, you can literally, people will pay extra for consistency. And that's built into the, just the essence of Tesla vehicles. Um, like there, there's, it, most of these robo taxis are gonna be, at least at first, hypothetically, Tesla Model 3s or Tesla Model Ys, and some S's and X's probably. But things are 95% the same across Model 3s and Ys. And even in terms of S's and X's as well, the most important things are basically all the same. The comfort of the seats and the quality of the speakers and the infotainment screen and all of that stuff, it's always consistent. And so I think just built into the idea of getting a Tesla Robo Taxi is this idea of consistency. I know I'm gonna get a comfortable Tesla, comfortable leather seats, that don't make my butt numb when I'm sitting in them for more than 30 minutes and you know, so on and so forth. Which leads into number three, and this is where you're seeing the bleed over, comfort. You know you're getting a car that's not gonna have a loud, raspy, you know, four cylinder engine or whatever. You know you're getting a quiet, comfortable experience in the car for the most part. I know people in the comments are gonna say, well, what about all the Teslas with rattles and stuff? Yeah, that's kind of a thing for sure. But I think overall, the comfort and the quietness of it being an electric vehicle is just going to 
again, be something that people would be willing to pay a premium for. Again, this is something already on Uber that you can pay a premium for. You can guarantee getting picked up in an electric car. And, you know, I've done this in California and specifically most of the time you're you're getting a Tesla that's coming to pick you up. There's hardly any other car. So it's already built into Uber's app that you can pay a premium to be picked up in a Tesla. So again, I think this is something people would be willing to pay a premium for. Number four, music. I, I, to me, this is very self-explanatory, but I'll just go through it anyway. Uh, if someone else is in the car with you, I think even though you could, of course, ask them to play the music that you want them to play, there's just sort of a social awkwardness to that. I think I've certainly never really done that. I think a lot of people would feel uncomfortable asking their Uber driver to play a certain type of music or a certain song or whatever. And there, there's sort of an inconvenience with it. If you have a certain playlist that you want to play, what are you, how are you going to do that? Like, are you going to tell them to look up your playlist on Spotify and play like? There's just a lot of logistics to go through. And then on top of that, there's the fear of judgment from the Uber driver of like them hearing the music that you listen to. If, if you can just get into a robo taxi and your phone is connected through the app and you can control the infotainment to play whatever music you want and it's connected to Spotify because already the Spotify app is in the car or Apple Music or whatever and you can just access all your favorite playlists, again, I think this is something people would be willing to pay a premium for. Number five, safety. Now, I know this is going to be a controversial one because I always get the comments of people saying robo taxis are so dangerous, they're not a thing yet, yada yada. Again, this is a thought experiment. I'm assuming that this is at the point where robo taxis are comparably safe to a human, if not safer. And let's just assume it's comparable. Okay, let's say they're, they're get, they get in roughly the same number of accidents as a human. You're still benef You're still uh, at an advantage being in a Tesla compared to another car, um, because Teslas are the safest cars tested in basically every safety test ever. Lowest risk of injury for Tesla Model 3 and Model Y by far out of any car ever made. So if you can guarantee that the taxi ride you're taking, you're going to be in the safest cars ever tested versus like an old Kia Forte that's like two, two and a half thousand pounds that could get absolutely obliterated by a truck or an SUV, I think you'd rather be in a Tesla probably. I think people would be willing to pay a premium for that. Number six, infotainment. I think streaming movies and YouTube and stuff like that definitely has way more potential than the game side of things or the app side of things. But I think the infotainment screen is worth considering too as a bonus of why someone would pay a premium for a Tesla Robo Taxi. And the last thing, and this is purely speculation on my part, I have no idea if this is remotely part of their plans, but it wouldn't surprise me if it ended up being something in the future. With that infotainment screen is the potential to play advertisements. Now, I know this maybe sounds a bit like a dystopian future to some people, like, oh, I'm going to get in a robo taxi and there's going to be advertisements playing at me and I have to sit through them while I'm on, you know, in the car waiting to be dropped off. Well, I think here's how they would probably do it. When you get picked up by the robo taxi, or when you're ordering it, I could imagine that you could select one of two options. You could select an ad-free ride that you have to pay a little bit extra for, or you could pay for a, a ride that does have ads and you get a discount. Or maybe it's part of a subscription service. If you're subscribed to the Tesla ride hailing service, then you never get the ads by default. But if you have the free version of the app, then you, you know, you, you have to listen to ads or whatever. So the whole point of listing all these things, the whole thing that I'm coming to here, is in my CyberCab videos, when I'm estimating that you could charge the customer 83 cents per mile. The reality is Uber and Lyfts are actually charging closer to $2 per mile, $2.50 per mile, depending on the circumstances, sometimes maybe even more. Um, so the fact that I'm assuming 83 cents per mile for a robo taxi, this might be the case at first, because I do think that at first there will be a stigma or just issues with perception around robo taxi. So at first you may have to undercut your competition and charge less for a robo taxi just to get people to try the service and, and use it um, and see that it's actually safe and see that it's actually cool and usable and convenient and whatever. 
But I think once that passes, I think people would be crazy to not want to take a robo taxi when you have all of these advantages. I just don't see it being 83 cents per mile once people get used to the idea of using it. Once people get used to the idea of using it, why would you ever order a more expensive Uber ride or Lyft ride where you have to deal with a driver who might be annoying, where you can't play your music, where you, where you might be kind of uncomfortable, where you may not feel safe. And if you start making the assumption that you could actually charge more like two or three dollars per mile in a Tesla Robo Taxi, then suddenly the earnings that seem kind of small in these CyberCab videos go way up. And the cool thing about this is you can do the math yourself. Anytime I upload one of these videos, you can put in whatever numbers you're assuming someone could earn. So just remember when you watch these CyberCab videos, I'm assuming that the, the owner of the vehicle, you hypothetically, or me, would be earning 17 and a half cents per mile at the end of the day. Gross profit, that's after deducting all costs of operation, that's after deducting the revenue split with Tesla. But you could make that number whatever you think makes sense. So if you think, like I'm saying, you could charge a premium for a robo taxi, well, add 50 cents onto that, add a dollar onto that, whatever you think makes sense, and rerun the numbers. You, you just multiply the number of miles that the car goes in the video by whatever number you think they would earn per mile, and then you have your revenue. And quickly, you could imagine that that number that I'm ending up with doubles, triples, quadruples, quintuples even, potentially, depending on how things go. So I think I got that all off my chest. I appreciate you all watching. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments about all these thoughts. Are there things that I'm not thinking about? Do, do you think what these estimations are way off? I'd love to hear. I'm willing to update the, the financials of these CyberCab videos in the future. But yeah, let me know what you guys think and I appreciate you watching.